I love Sonic the Hedgehog, but can I make a robot Sonic the Hedgehog? Well, I've made some walking robots in the past, but I'm not going to try and make a robot that runs along, but I really enjoyed making my two-wheel balancing robot. So for this project, I'm going to try and improve on that and make it a bit more like the Boston Dynamics handle robot that's got knees that bend so it can lean either side to go around corners and also it's got a bit of suspension to deal with uneven terrain. This video isn't sponsored, but this is just a quick ad for some ways that you can support the channel and that really makes all the difference to the projects. I've got Patreon and YouTube channel membership where you can support me and you can get access to all the videos up to a week early and also some sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. I've also got some affiliate links in the description to this video and if you use those links to sign up or buy something then it won't cost you any more and I'll get some money. And those include a free trial sign up for Skillshare, 3D printing supplies from Matter Hackers, Amazon and Epidemic Sound and various others that I'll add in there in the future. And of course I have my merchandise store where you can get my t-shirts, mugs, socks, bags and various other things with pictures of things I've built on them. Okay, let's get back to the project. So this is my main mechanical structure and of course we've got these two knees that bend and these are operated by ball screws which are going to slide up and down here and that's going to operate each knee mechanism independently. And that's going to give the ability for the robot to lean sideways as it goes around corners and also these legs to act as suspension and that's going to be active. Let's start with the wheels. These are 3D printed with the Lulzbot Morstruder with a 1.2mm nozzle that makes them really tough. The red parts are with the Morstruder and the white parts are with a normal half mil extruder. So we've got a nice T5 pulley there for a pulley and a belt to go round. And we've also got inserts here for the bearings and these are 12mm bearings on the inside. And of course there's one on each side just like a skateboard to hold that wheel nice and straight. That of course is going to be driven by a motor which is the Turning G SK3 6374 149kV motor. I've got a pair of those and these are on an aluminium plate and you might recognise this from another project. So of course those are mounted to a block which is another more Struder print and we've got a place on the back here for the motor encoder so these are normal 3D prints and the aluminium plate is on the front there. So of course this will be driven by the motor and that belt is just the right tension, there's no other way of tensioning it, it's pretty tight. I think they're brand new belts so they may slacken a bit but that's really really tight so it should be fine and basically this piece of aluminium is the shin of Sonic and of course Sonic has red and white shoes which is why the parts are red and white. I've still got to put the white tyre on. And of course there's two of these and they're opposites. These are pretty substantially sized, the wheel's going to be bigger with the tyre on of course. This whole thing's going to stand around a metre tall when it's complete. <laughs> So the tyres are printed, I use the HS 1.2mm nozzle which I've never printed NinjaFlex before. Some of the quality suffered a bit, I need to tweak the profile a bit and there isn't an off the shelf profile in Lulzbot's edition of Cura, but um, those seem fine, I mean they're bonded fine and they seem pretty tough. So we've done about 25% infill there which should be fine and then it took 15 hours with that massive nozzle. We now need to work on the knee joints which are bits of studding bolted through so these are nice and stiff and then we've got two brackets like this which have got bearings in the outside and those of course fit on like this to make that pivot and of course there's another piece of 2040 that bolts in between the two. Right there we go those are bolted on we've just got some lock nuts on the outside 8mm bearings here and then I've got 12mm in diameter bearings here which are going to make the hip pivots. 
So this is the main body. We've got 2040 extrusion and 2020 extrusion bolted together in these 3D prints to make a really rigid frame. And we've got two bits of M12 studding, which are gonna make the hip pivots. So I've got these V wheels now and these sliders, and this is V slot extrusion. So those fit in there perfectly and they're exactly the right spacing so that that's nice and tight. And then on the other side of that, we're gonna have a ball screw mounted on these blocks and that's gonna push these up and down. So there's another piece which fits in there and that's got the hole for the ball nut, and it's also got a point for a pivot point to come down and push the back of the legs. So I fitted my ball screws and these upper mounts here, so obviously when the ball screw turns, the nut goes up and down, and that's gonna push this. So these are 1605 ball screws, which means every turn is five millimeters, and they're 16 millimeters in diameter. Now I'm gonna be hopefully running this on 48 volts with the brushless motor coupled directly to it, so these should go four times faster than the open dog actuators. So we've got our mechanism now, which lifts it up and down, and all we need is some rods in here on each side to go and push and pull these things. And that means it can bend up and down, and of course also it can lean side to side slightly as it goes around corners. And helpfully it can sit down when it's not balancing, and that means I can turn it off and we can just pop him down there and he won't fall over. I fitted the linkages there, and these are two 10 millimeter rose joints with some 10 mil studding and nuts to lock them in place there. So obviously now as we turn the ball screw, that moves the joints quite nicely. And even though this is a short range of travel, the leverage is such that it moves the legs quite a long way. And we can, of course, slide these things in and out to give even more leverage, or we can slide them out. I've left some extra on the end of this so that we can uh, move that pivot point up and down. So I've got a couple of here for 10 mil to 10 mil, so we just need to fit a pair of brushless motors on the other end, and we should be good to go. My two motors are fitted, and these are the O-Drive branded 150 kV motors you can get from O-Drive Robotics, which is gonna be the motor driver I'm gonna use to actually control these motors. And remember, there's two here, and there's another two similar motors on the wheels. I've got 10 mil to 10 mil shaft couplings, and we've got a plate on the back there, which is to fit the encoder so we can position these accurately. So that is it with it it's ball screws fitted and obviously now the legs are pretty rigid they're not back drivable and we'll talk about the suspension in a minute but that is full height with the legs extended as far as they go so they're slightly crouched and then of course when it absorbs load on each leg or it leans over it's going to bend one of those legs and those legs will crouch down so we still have a head to go on here and shoulders and arms and things and lots of cosmetic panels and of course all of the electronics so at the beginning i mentioned this robot's going to have suspension so it can absorb load as it goes over bumps and things but of course there's no springs in here and the whole mechanism is pretty rigid with those ball screws that can't be back driven and so on so how are we going to do that well those of you who've been watching my channel probably already know the answer and it relates to this chat behind me which is open dog Where we left off with the last open dog video was that we put a new test foot on here with a switch in so it can tell when the feet are on the ground and also a load cell attached to the aluminium extrusion which measures deflection and that means we can measure the pressure on the legs and that was an attempt to get more elastic or an elastic effect out of the rigid actuators that is much more forgiving when it tries to balance and ultimately it's much more agile. But I had some problems conveying the data from the Arduino, which is actually a Teensy down on the leg there, reading the load cell using this piece of wire to the Teensy, which is the microcontroller in the body of the dog. And that's due to the brushless motors, which are causing massive induction on this cable and loads of spikes on the data. So I've been doing some testing with CAN bus, which is what I mentioned in that last open dog video. And that's a protocol used in automotive applications to send data through very noisy environments. And we can do that with just a twisted pair of cable. These ones aren't even twisted. This this is my test rig and that's using two or three Teensy 3.2s to send data to this Teensy 3.6 over CAN bus and each of these little modules here is a CAN bus transceiver. Now these Teensy's have CAN bus built in but you still need the transceiver to send the data over long distances. So this works pretty well. I can send in fact from any of these to any of them and I can send data all at once and the protocol just sorts itself out. So it's ideal for a robot with four legs or two legs and a load cell attached to each one and sending that data past all the brushless motors to the master controller and we could even send data backwards if we wanted to as well. So the plan is to use the same load cells in the legs of Sonic to try and make active suspension by measuring the load on the legs and making those motors and ball screws respond accordingly. Now 
Now, I don't know if it's going to be responsive enough, but we know we can read the load cells 300 times a second. The CAN bus is quick enough and the processing on the teensies is quick enough. But whether we can make the motors physically respond quick enough, as quick as an actual spring would, I don't know. So this is basically R&D to test that method out to see if it's responsive enough before we do all four legs on Open Dog and see if that works at all. So that's the end of this video. Next time we'll be putting the electronics in, at least getting it balancing, getting those load cells in and getting the data to be conveyed to the main controller and seeing if we can make those legs responsive. I think this is going to be a three part series in all, all being well. And the last video will be putting cosmetic panels on and hopefully taking it out somewhere to test it. So don't forget you can support the channel with the links in the description, as I said before, if you'd like to. Otherwise, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. All right, that's all for now.